probably. Well, I need you here for me. Are we on, Andrew, now? Craig X here, my man, the Big Puff of what's going on. Everybody who's watching behind the scenes over here, we're hanging out here on the patio for a second. You might notice something different. We've got a whole crowd of people. Andrew, flip to the crowd cam. Everybody wave to this camera over here. Hi, hi, very nice. Hi, 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 hi. Okay, so the shtick is basically here in uh, about two minutes. The intro will start. Then uh, the show will start. i got a little rundown for you all what's happening. There's, you've seen some gift bags and some joints. Please follow the instructions. Not that particularly hard. Also, there's all sorts of snacks and bevies and stuff inside, so I appreciate y'all helping yourself to that. Yeah. There's some reserved seating up front. Otherwise, there's a few seats left over here. Um, with that, really appreciate y'all being here. I'm looking forward to this. So with that, we're just going to let the uh, kind of camera run for a second while Andrew just does it, just to give you guys the heads up. But yes, the joints are to be lit at 420. The best way to do those, because they're a little bit of a pain, peel the, just the little top part off. Right? It's a little bit picky. Peel it off, bite that little top part, and then give it a little, just a little pop to pop the top. Are oh, you guys going to squeeze really hard? Yeah, not that hard, Ken. Just, just like a little. Got it! And then they pop right open. And then, yeah, please join us to light them at 420. And also, at the end of the show, there's a little shtick at the end of the show that I'd like y'all to participate in as well, too. If that's cool, Puffa, appreciate you being up here, man. You know, you always participate in the pre-show. Hey, 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 hey. All right. I, it looked like Instagram was down earlier, so at least take the pictures and post them later, if nothing else. Otherwise, the location is Studio 710. You can tag Expert Joints, Mike Rita. Also, Expert Joints Live is the hashtag as well, too. And with that, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I appreciate everybody who's here. Thank you very much. And with that, in like a couple of seconds, Andrew's going to run the intro and then tell me when we're on because I don't have a monitor here today. Cool? Yeah. Stone bastards. Let me try that again. Cool? That's, that's better, that's better, that's better. Uh, Jen, you're supposed to be sitting up here. Puffa, you're supposed to, and Slippy, Slippy, you're supposed to be over here. Puffa, you're right here. Cindy, you're, Cindy, you sit over here as well, too. Yeah, Cindy, you're over here. Slippy, you're over here. Jenny, 419, okay, he's going to run the intro. We'll be back in a second, guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate y'all being here. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the producer and do not necessarily reflect those of Cannabis Life Network, POT TV, Cannabis Culture, or High Times. What's up, y'all? It's me, Craig X, out of the studio at 710 Patio, doing it on the rooftop style. It's 420. Light them if you got them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, if it is uh, your 420, please join us for ours. If it's not your 420, that's okay. Join us anyway. We're out here doing it for the 180th time, episode 180, and in a complete. That's right. Woo! And it's also the season four finale as well, too. So thank you all for being here today. I appreciate that. A lot of people came out to be part of this here. Let me do a little housekeeping first before we roll on with the show. Uh, last week, me and DJ Slippy did episode 47 of uh, Fridays over there featuring Opus 420. You can check the replay over on the Mixcloud and the Twitter and the Periscope and all that. Appreciate everybody who's here doing that and who clicks and watches those. Also, check it out on High Times TV. TV.HighTimes.com. You can check them out as well, too. And on the HTTV app, appreciate you. Come on in. You guys are all good. Make your way around this way. You're fine. And then um, 
Yeah, uh, uh, last week's show was all there with all the series. It's a good thing. Uh, please go over there, support that. Check those out. Appreciate there. What else? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, if you don't want to miss what's going on in the YouTubes, of course, please hit the uh, subscribe button down here and give us a thumbs up as well, too. And there's a graphic. Andrew's running over here at the time. That's what it is. Um, and uh, let me see what else. Oh, yeah, we're on the patio in a complete 180. We're outside with um, a whole bunch of friends for a special episode. And I say, who's we? Well, these guys. Yeah, that's and Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have Freddie, he ain't wrong. He ain't wrong. Uh, so yes, they're out here getting high, we're out getting high. If you notice, everybody out here has got a, a Fukushima pre-roll as well too here. Right? Pretty good, right? right. So you can, you all can get fooked.ca if you, if you want. Also, this makes it, this was joint 192, and there's like 50 of you here with all joints. So that's like joint 242 for the season, so that's pretty good. Um, probably do more later. Uh, let me see what else. Um, at this rate, I bet you we'll probably even hit 300 before the show's over, let's face it. But I appreciate everybody who came out here. A lot of folks made it, including our guest today, the funniest comic in cannabis by the name of Mike Rita. Make a little noise for Mike Rita. Oh, you'll, you'll make more noise afterwards. He's actually quite funny if you don't know the act. I've seen it. It's great. We also have to thank Crop King Seeds for having us here. Uh, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be putting on this event and Mike wouldn't be here. So check out CropKingSeeds.com, support them, appreciate that. And uh, with that, if I could get a, uh, let me see, um, check, check, check. Okay, great, yeah. Well, I do. Now this part, off the script. I really gotta thank everybody who's here in the crowd. You've paid a big part in some way or another or you're here with someone who did in the last season and previous seasons, so I appreciate you being here. Thank you for coming, joining us to toke up and tune in, not only on the Cannabis Culture, the POT TV, the Cannabis Life Network, and the expertjoints.com, but on the rooftop here at Studio 7 pat patio. So give me a round of applause to yourself, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Gotta say, it's been a hoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, me try, let me try that joke again. It's, it's been a hoot. <laughs> All you get for an opener, Rita. You better be funnier than that. Oh, uh, hey! Hey! All right, I like that. All right, all right. All right, well, if you have not uh, seen our guest perform, you're in for a treat pretty much. Basically, rather than doing the usual talk show format show, tired of that. We've done that a million times. Well, 180 times, actually, and then some, truth be told. So that's why we're going to do this in a complete 180. All you're here to see is not to be on the show. You're here to enjoy the show and the show that is Mike Rita. And for those of you who don't know, since winning Second City's Tim Sims Award for Best New Comic, Mike Rita has gone on to perform at countless festivals and on TV and radio across the country. He's worked with the likes of Joe Rogan, Bobby Lee, and Mike McDonald, has appeared on MTV, Much Music, CBC Radio, Sirius XM, and Just for Laughs in Montreal, and of course JFL 42 in Toronto, and even Pot TV. When not on tour at Yuck Yucks Comedy Clubs, Mike can be found hosting the award-winning Stoner Sundays weekly at the uh, weekly at the renowned Vapor Central in Toronto. Ladies and gentlemen, it brings me great pleasure to bring you one of my absolute favorite, com favorite comics in the business. Put your hands together for Mike Rita. Yeah. <laughs> nah, keep it going. What the fuck happened? Hey, what can I do with this? Can I get this shit off? This is the most stoner shit I've ever seen. Yeah. Hey, yo, Craig X, take this uh, Cannabis Life Network thing out of here. I feel like some shitty news reporter. Yes, sir. That's going to be much harder than I ever expected. Always. Oh, yeah. Yo, give it up for Craig, everybody. Let him hear it. Check, check. Yo, there it is. This guy, yo, he does it all. Give it up for Craig. Let him hear it. Yeah. He's a host. He's a mic technician. There's a guy on the roof. He's a sniper. He's going to kill us all. <laughs> Just starts blasting us all. This is the most Vancouver show that I could have ever done in my fucking life. Did you guys, oh, you went to a comedy show? Where was it? At Yuck Yucks? No, it was on a rooftop in downtown. You know? We were smoking weed. <laughs> There was a guy in a Golden State Warriors jersey in Canada. Uh, Boom! Boom! 
Go back to America or at least somewhere else shittier than here. Go back to Abbotsford or some shit. Uh, Surrey, no, that place is nice. I can't believe you have that jersey on. I feel like there's something in like a Torontonian in me that means that I just have to like heckle you and shit like that and make fun of you and be like, oh, fucking. Warriors are not gonna win this goddamn fucking series. We can't do this, I got hired to do comedy. I'm just gonna stand here and argue with you for 10 minutes. The Warriors are not gonna take this. Canada sang the national anthem last game. We're gonna win this shit. We're really lucky to live in Canada. Like, look what we're doing right now. Do you understand how amazingly free this is? Like, what? Like, 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 like we, we, okay. The funny thing is, whether or not it was legal, we'd still be doing this. Because this is like the one group of people who don't give a shit if it's legal or not. We're all like, yeah, we'd be doing this anyway. This is what yeah, we do. Yeah. We smoke weed. And this is, but people around the world, like, they don't understand. Like, they, they're going to come to Canada to smoke weed, and Vancouver's going to be one of those spots, and they're never going to want to go anywhere else. I want you guys to know, I'm from Toronto, born and raised, and Vancouver is the best city in the country. I'll fuck it. You guys win. <laughs> But it comes with like a cost that you guys also have the most fucked up crackheads in the country too So it's like a weird trade-off, you know, I love this city too because uh, Every time you fly in like I flew in and I was smoking weed at the airport and the guy who picked me up I was like, can I smoke? He's like, oh, obviously you're in Vancouver. I was like, oh, yeah that's right. I just got in the car. I was like, yeah, that's all right. I guess fuck Vancouver's nice, you know, like like living in Canada is nice. We're really lucky right now Like do you guys even care that it's legal? Did it even change anybody's life here? No. Of course not. Isn't that, you guys ever have people ask you, hey man, weed's legal in Canada, is it crazy now? You're like, no, nothing. It's even worse than it was before somehow. <laughs> somehow it's worse than it was before they made it legal. There's more rules, people give a shit. You know, it's funny because they didn't legalize it for us. We, they don't have to legalize for us. We already smoked weed. They legalized it for old people. You know, think about that. Old people sitting in their house like, now we can finally do it, Robert. <laughs> We can order it online. Look at that. They have a kush. My son says that's good. <laughs> you know? Like, has anybody... I've tried legal weed. I've even gone as far as to buy legal weed. Has anybody bought legal weed yet here? Yeah. Guys, it's okay. You don't have to... I love how I really... No, God, no. What the fuck? I like... We all have to say no, too, because some of our dealers are sitting in the audience right now, for fuck's sake. They're like, no, I never bought it. Man, we're so fucking lucky, man. Like, honestly, like, I'm getting high on stage right now. Like, like I I'm from Ontario, too, which was fucked up. Did you guys get weed stores right away, or did you guys have to order online, too? Online? You guys have weed stores yet? Is there BC weed stores? A couple? This guy, this guy did the funniest face. He's like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that was the face you gave me. Like, I, kind of, I think, but who gives a fuck? <laughs> That's my favorite, man. Everyone in this audience has real, like, honestly, I do comedy normally for normal audiences, and when you do a whole high audience, you get high audience reactions, you know? <laughs> like, for real, normally there would never be that. Mm. <laughs> Is that a yeah or a no? <laughs> like, we didn't get stores. Do you guys remember, like, we didn't get stores, and neither did you guys. So people had to order online. And you guys, I don't know, did, like, Canada Post went on strike, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but, like, people who were waiting three to five days for their weed had to wait like two, three weeks, some of them. Do you remember that? And the people were complaining all over the country. And only in Canada. You know how spoiled you are to have to complain about weed? And it make like front page news and shit like that. Like people standing there like, where's the cannabis, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like you understand how spoiled we are? As a I remember seeing the news, people being like, I've been waiting two to three weeks for my goddamn cannabis. And people on the news and the news reporter there was like, yes, sir, that's unbelievable. Can you know? like, <laughs> Like, the rest of the world is falling. You don't understand how crazy we are and spoiled. Like, the rest of the world is falling apart. America, never been more politically divided. Europe, their dollars fucked. Asia is Asia. Who knows what the fuck is happening in Asia, you know? And then the rest of the world is like, Canada, what's your biggest problem? Over here, like, we had to wait two weeks for a fucking weed over here, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Only, only, only people who have never smoked weed in their lives would think three to five days is a good amount to wait for weed. Can you imagine you went to your dealer's house? Hey, here's 50. Can I get a quarter? Yeah, I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> Why? I need it now. No, three to five days. Okay, I'll come pick it up on Saturday. No, it's not a real day. <laughs> Saturday, Sunday aren't real, but you gotta come Monday. Three to five days for weed. <laughs> Who? Who's, who's sitting there going, all right, here we go, we're gonna get high. On Tuesday, fuck, let's go. I just wait, it'll be here. <laughs> weed is one of those things that I start buying more weed when I get down to my last half ounce. Like when you're like, I only have a day and a half's worth of weed. I should pick up more right now just to be safe. 
There could be a tidal wave tomorrow and I won't be able to get to my dealer's house. What's the most amount of weed you've ever read up on? Like, you ever have, like, a, an ounce, but you know you're going out for the weekend? You're like, I might need a whole nother ounce. Who knows? Do you guys remember when you were younger and a 20 sack was enough to get you so high that that was your day? Do you remember that? Do you remember being in high school and someone showing up with a 20 sack and you being like, yo, fuck, third and fourth period. Let's get the fuck out of here, yo. We have a 20 sack. Listen, you ever just smoke a 20 sack like that and you're like, we need another ounce right now. Fuck, you know, that's not enough. Like a 20 sack. I, I can't remember when a 20 sack was enough. Do you guys ever sit there and think about how much weed you smoked in, mo in money and then you're like, no, let's not think about that ever again. <laughs> You ever look at a house and you're like, I I've had that house in weed, you know? <laughs> it's true. It's a weird, unnerving thought. You ever look at like a Ferrari? Of course you do, because you live in Vancouver. <laughs> uh, there's one right now. <laughs> Just... Man, smoking weed is special, though. We got to live in the amazing time that is the, like, the split between it being illegal for all these years, and now for the rest of our lives, it'll be legal. You understand that? We all got to enjoy that. Like, that might have, it's not even cool to us now, because we don't even give a shit about it now. Right now, we're all rebellious, like, yeah, that shit, fuck you. Support your local dealer, grow your own, blah, blah, blah. But in like 50, 60 years, our, grand, our kids aren't even gonna like weed. It's gonna be our grandkids that love weed. Our kids are gonna look at weed weird, like, ew, smoke weed, what am I, my mom and dad? Ew, you know? <laughs> They're not gonna like it. They're gonna think it's weird. <laughs> our grandkids are the one who are gonna like it because they're gonna trip out. Our grandkids are gonna go to school and we're probably, like, imagine like 50, 60 years from now when you're in your 70s and 80s and you're getting older, your grandkids are gonna read about our times in their history book. You understand? Their history books in school are gonna have this time and they're gonna come home and be like, Grandpa, I read in my history book that you were alive during marijuana prohibition. <laughs> and we're gonna be 80 or shit and be angry and be like, you're damn right I was, you little fuck. <laughs> In my day, we lost a lot of men in the drug war. <laughs> like, you know? Oh, yeah. And they're not going to get it. They're just going to like, crap, I read in my books that drug dealers had knives and guns. Some of them had planes. We're going to get angry and be like, planes? My drug dealer didn't even have a cell phone all the time. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? What are they teaching you in that book? And you're going to flip through. Uh, let me teach you a little thing or two. Sit the fuck down. You know what a half quarter is? No, <laughs> god damn it. Liberals for some shit. You were gonna be just angry at fucking random part. You know when you get old, you just get random, you just get angry. You're a goddamn conservative. <laughs> we're gonna try rolling a joint. Our grandkids aren't even gonna get it. Grandpa, why are you rolling a joint? You could just take one of these tablets. Tablets, get the fuck out of here. In my day, you rolled it in a zigzag. <laughs> we're not even gonna be able to lick it because we're so old. We're gonna have to do old people lip shit like. <laughs> <laughs> I can still lick it. <laughs> Your wife from another room. No, we can't. Shut up in there. <laughs> <laughs> we live in an incredible weed culture, man. I fucking love it. I love that we get to yeah. be these people, man. Yeah, it's cool. We get to be that generation, huh? Believe that. Yeah. Believe that we get to be that generation. Hippies yeah. thought they had it. They were like, dude, uh, smoke pot, freedom. Fuck, shut the fuck up. Legalize it. Let's get some shit done. That was our generation. <laughs> we smoked so much weed that the government had to give it to us. Do you understand that? Do you understand that mathematically it would have been bad business to not give us legal weed? And my favorite thing is now that they, they like, lately there's been a lot of articles coming out like Canada had a chance to corner the market on pot and they drop the ball. I love these articles because it's good. It puts pressures on our politicians because they, did you like, they're like, yeah, every, every province is, is saying that they're losing money with legal weed, which always makes me laugh because of course you are. Your product is shit, it's more expensive and it's harder to get. Yeah. And they're still like, well, but why are we losing money? <laughs> our product is garbage, right? That, that's what our number one complaint is, dry and shit, okay. Our prices are more expensive than the streets, okay, yeah, okay. And it's hard to get to. Huh. I don't understand why we're losing millions of dollars a month, for Christ's sake. I thought people wanted weed. <laughs> no, they want good weed at a good price at their friend's basement. Oh. Free the, weed. Uh, <laughs> the weed is free. We got to free the minds, bro. These people's minds are what's fucking stuck. You ever, like, politicians don't even get it. Like, they, you, you can talk to them about weed and they'll be like, yes. <laughs> 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 The problem is though, have you ever seen weed politicians? They're even worse. You ever, like, like, you ever see like sonar like politicians, like guys who are unelected, they always come up and like do speeches. They're always like, yeah, dude, you know, we need to uh, get out there and uh, spread the word of cannabis to our constituents. <laughs> we don't need that. We know we need, we need like a straight cut guy who's so fucking like, 
who's so good at speaking political shit, but also at the, like we need okay, you know what we need? We need a politician to just come out to like one of those little like uh, platform things and just do a speech, and at the end of the speech, just pull out a joint and be like, that was a lot of work. I'd like to relax now. <laughs> It'll make headline news. Politician smokes weed. Pol I want Justin Trudeau to do it, just to be like, you guys are always making fun of my stutter. Well, it's because I'm high all the time. <laughs> I love that we have that in our. Do you guys think we'll see a time where politicians smoke weed on TV and do photo ops smoking weed? Yes. yes. How long yes. it take? Yes. You think it'll take like the next two, three years? I hope so. Shorter than that? Yeah. Next time. Longer. You think it's you, the guy? You're like, dude, longer. Two. Two election. Two election like cycles. It's no good. <laughs> I'll be running for office. Yeah. <laughs> Pothead comedian takes an aim at an office. It's just me in a suit. <laughs> What's the deal with the economic situation? <laughs> Ukrainian, or Ukrainian today? Yeah, the Ukrainian guy who won, he, did he just like went oh. full out president too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that guy's the man. <laughs> That's like, this whole country is a joke, but this is not a joke anymore to me. And that country's like, wow, sad, all right. Yeah, this guy did it, this guy did it, he won me over, man. <laughs> Canada's really funny, man. You guys ever see, you guys ever scroll through Facebook when you're high and find like, like just news articles on our, uh, on our prime minister and you just read the comments and you just find like small town people just destroying them? Even Canadian people who hate politicians are still the funniest heckles. They're like, Justin Trudeau is ruining our country, boo! And you're like, what kind of, that's how angry you are? That's what you're gonna write on Facebook? Justin Trudeau, he's letting in Muslims, boo! These are people who live in places that don't even have black people and they're worried about Muslims for fuck's sakes. Get it together, you fucks. <laughs> Man, our, we live in a funny country. Like, I, like if, even in this like little area. Make some noise if you had immigrant parents. I mean, you make some noise if you had immigrant parents. I mean, yeah, come on. I had immigrant parents too. What kind of immigrant parents do we got in here? Make some noise. Like Colombian. Colombian, hardcore, bro. Iranian. Mexican. Chinese. Chinese. <laughs> you're so funny. You're like Chinese Vancouver. Hey, <laughs> bro, bro, you caught me. <laughs> <laughs> Pork chop to Portuguese? Yeah, How funny is that, man? <laughs> this this uh, guy looks like he's just coming from the beach or some shit like that, doesn't he? Okay, what else we got? English. English. English is the funniest immigrant because not real immigrant. Do you know what I mean? Like you never hear of like, yeah, my father, he had a hard time coming here. He had a hard time finding a managerial position in the fucking like, you know? Like, of course he did. Anybody who's man, a British guy shows up for a labor position, they're like, buddy, you got an accent. You're the manager now. Fuck here. You guys just rips off the name tag. Here you go. You don't meet British people in labor positions. They're managers for fuck's sakes. You know, supervisors. <laughs> Your mom too, she's British? <laughs> Portuguese gay. And you're from Toronto too? Yeah. And you, what are you doing in Vancouver? <laughs> Why are you even asking that question? Because it looks like you're filming a weird porno or something right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody else looks like they're really big potheads, but you're like, hey, if you want a little chachi, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> with weed you like weed isn't a gateway drug but it's definitely a gateway into drug culture you understand what i mean like just because i smoke weed I, I somehow i've stumbled across coke dude it's so funny you really do have that look where it's like at the end of the night you're the guy's like hey you think anybody's got a little cha -cha? that's my favorite man other drugs that you get to try through your world of weed like when i mean other drugs i mean honestly acid and mushrooms probably being the best ones clap clap if you've never done acid or mushrooms let me hear you if you've never done them Oh, fuck! One person! I honestly thought there was gonna be nobody. I was like, this is the exact crowd where there would be not one person who's never done a psychedelic. You, okay, I want you guys to know, I've been doing comedy for over 10 years. I don't think I've ever had not almost the entire audience not clap for that question. There's always a bunch of people who are like, of course I've never tried acid. I'm not a fucking maniac. Everybody was like, dude, man, I think I tried like last week. <laughs> Try. <laughs> Mushrooms and acid are fun, aren't they? Because you don't know what the fuck you're waiting for. Sometimes you do a half a tap and you don't feel nothing. Sometimes you do a half a tap and you're like, boom, you know? <laughs> you okay, dude? I don't, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I love, I love, I love mushrooms, but I like acid more. Mushrooms gives me anxiety sometimes. Like sometimes mushrooms just takes too long to peak. Do you get what I mean? Like you're, there's like a two hour period before you get really high where you're, and I, don't, I never do like two grams of mushrooms. I always do like five, six grams. If you're gonna do mushrooms, do mushrooms. Like, you know, you don't get on a motorcycle and do 15, like, bang. 
I'm on a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, I guess, technically. <laughs> but are you? Are you riding a motorcycle? No, you get on a motorcycle, you hit the highway. Please, ah, you know? Because when I do mushrooms, that's what I want to do. I want to do six grams and, and, and be mad at myself for doing it. At, for, for, this is too much. Why did you do that? And then a half an hour in, be like, oh, you're stuck now. And then two hours in, be like, hey, you guys ever feel the wind? That's one of my favorite things about mushrooms and acid is how close you can get to nature just naturally. You ever just stand on acid, look at a tree, and you're like, this thing's alive right now. You can hear me or no tree? You ever try to talk to your dog or your cat when you're really high? You ever just make eye contact with them like, hey, you can hear me right now or no? And they look at you and you're like, oh! He looked, I swear in my head I was thinking about it. I love when you're high like that and you can convince yourself of wet or like the most random situations. Is it because I'm talking too low away from the microphone? Is that what you're doing? Oh, you're not. I thought that was it. I want you guys to know, throughout my career, I always get people in the back just doing this so I can lift my microphone because I'm a big pothead and I'll rest this thing on that little gut flap right here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you think I won't? I'll just be chilling there like this, gut flattening it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a dog up here. Look how nice this is. This is one of the best shows of my life. We're doing it on a patio on a beautiful day. There's a dog. This isn't even a show. This is just me talking into a microphone. This is like a weed convention, you know? This is like some weird weed convention that I've stumbled onto. Hey, you guys, like what's your favorite strain? Mm -hmm, UK cheese? Uh -huh. <laughs> I actually love cheeses. And I love Jesus. <laughs> I actually love, 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 love cheeses. What's your favorite strains? I, I mean, we're going to have a lot of weird answers here, but... Rockstar Kush. Rockstar Kush. Oh, look at that. It's you and that guy. How did you guys come... This guy said the exact same strain the same time you said it. It actually looked creepy from my eyes. Because this guy went, you know, like rock star Kush, but you in the back were going, rock star Kush. And I was like, that's not your voice. How the fuck? He's a ventriloquist, yeah, and he's using you. Does that mean he has his hand up your what, bro? <laughs> Ventriloquist has got to be the creepiest thing. I want to have somebody to talk to. <laughs> Man, I was talking about immigrant parents. Portuguese guy, you smoked weed with your parents around? Like you smoked weed when you still lived back at home with your parents? No? See, I started smoking weed when I was 15 years old. Clap, do we have teenage pot users in here? Make some noise if you used weed as a teenager. Let me hear you right now. Yeah. Like, I don't even condone that much, but even like now, I'm like, nah, those were the best years though, man. Those are the best years of you smoking weed. Because every joint is like a paranoid filled joint. Do you guys remember how nervous you got? Preteens? Did you say preteens? Yeah. Whoa. Shut what? Whoa. Guys, that's too young. Imagine an 11 and 12 year old stumble in here right now high as fuck. We'd be like, get out of here. You're going to get us in trouble. Dude, we're part of the culture. Get the fuck out of here. Here's 10 bucks. Go to McDonald's. It's dollar drink days. <laughs> preteens. You guys are fucked. Like grade 7 and 8. You're like that weed smoking grandma though, so it all explains everything. Oh, I'm Canadian. Mm. Weed smoking grandma. I'm Canadian dad and granny. You're a good Sanctified time. Her. You know, you know, I'm gonna tell you something crazy. You're rare right now, but it, by the time our generation gets to your age, that'll be all of us as fuck right now. Like at family occasions, like I can't eat the turkey till I get a dab in for granny. <laughs> that sauce isn't as good unless I'm fucking ripped, you fuck. <laughs> God, I don't like Grandpa when he's not high on three or four dabs. <laughs> We're going to be so old, we won't even be able to dab it because it shakes too much. <laughs> yeah, imagine how hard we're going to cough. Like, you ever remember your grandfather's coughs that... <gasps> Do you remember that? Every grandfather or uncle has that cough. This sounds like a horn. <gasps> Grandpa, are you okay? <laughs> Why do you cough like that? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an immigrant. We all cough like this for some reason. Those boats and planes over. Who knows? See, I had immigrant parents and I smoked tons of weed, man. And the problem is that, like, we're going to be much different parents than our immigrant parents. I, we used to have to lie to our parents. Like, this guy just did it. Good. You're the man. He gave me the, like, microphone up. He's like, put the microphone up. <laughs> Trust the worst. Good for that kid. Remember when you were a kid and you just yelled like that for no reason? You're standing. That's one of the great things about being a kid. You can just do shit and your mom would just be like, okay, let's go. And you're like, ah! Just, I got a two year old. You know, people must think we're crazy sometimes, so we just let her yell it out because we're not going to give her the attention. So she'll just be like, ah! 
<laughs> and we're just standing there like, yeah, okay, get it over with. It's funny being a stoner parent. Like I, like, like I was talking about a second ago. This is so perfect that it all came around like that so much. <laughs> I had to hide it from my parents. And a lot of us, if you smoke weed as teenagers, you had to hide it from your like parents too. And the crazy thing is that like our kids aren't going to have to hide it from us. Our kids are going to come home high as shit and just look at us and be like, Dad, you're not going to believe it. Today, me and my friend Whitney tried like this like crazy like kink kush or some shit, dude. It was nuts, Dad. I'm so high right now. I'm going to go sleep, okay? Talk to you after. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> And you're just gonna be, you're gonna get old as fuck in that moment and be like, in my day you had to hide it from your parents out of respect. <laughs> like my parents, I used to have to lie to my parents. You guys ever lie to your parents about how high you were? I used to come home with red eyes and my mom would see my red eyes and ask me why my eyes were red. And I used to tell her that I went swimming. I swear to fucking God. <laughs> and every time she, everything would line up because she'd be like, swimming, the chlorine. And I'd be like, yeah, the chlorine. And she'd always be like, oh yeah, the swimming, you tired? I'd be like, yeah, I'm exhausted. Are you hungry? I'm fucking starving, man, yeah. Oh yeah, all that swimming, man. And you'd sit there high out of your fucking mind as a teenager talking to your mom. She'd be like, swimming, do you like it? I love it, yeah, it's so nice. <laughs> I want you to know one of my favorite days in life is when I came home high as a teenager <laughs> I want you to know man for fucking months of my life I came home high as a teenager and my mom never said shit because she thought I was swimming she would like be like you hungry and we'd have that whole conversation we'd laugh and then one day my sister told her that my, I wasn't swimming my sister just was like you know my, I just imagine it being like mom how's uh, Mike liking high school good your brother he love it every day he goes swimming and my sister went to the same school so she's like no he doesn't they don't go swimming till grade 10 he's only in grade 9 and she's like but every day his eyes are red mommy he's smoking weed every day every day you know <laughs> <laughs> because when I came home that day, listen, man, I, like this story's always fucked up itself. Because it's, it's, it's a great like imagery. I imagine you come home every day. You open your basement door. You walk through, and there's a kitchen, and your mom is usually there just chilling. Man, on this day, <laughs> okay, wait. Uh, I don't know what to do. Okay, wait. I'm just gonna dance for until the siren goes by. <laughs> There's a guy watching right now from like a control room. Control room guy, give me another one. <laughs> Doesn't that one just make you sad? I honestly, I honestly just got sad when I heard that. I was like, yo, that's a bad buzz, man. Give him a good one, Andrew. Give him a round of applause. Andrew, give me a good one, he says. Give me a round of applause. Yo, honestly, just start using that after jokes that don't sound that good. <laughs> what the fuck was I talking about? Oh, man! When I started coming up, you know, that's the worst thing. A room full of potheads asking, what, what am I just talking about? Everyone's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, you were talking about, remember, with your mom? <laughs> Have you ever had that moment? Like, honestly, you ever just sit and getting high with your friends and something happens on, like, just say the TV, like, whoa! And you're like, okay, what are we talking about? And your friend's like, what? <laughs> you ever just sit there and try your hardest? You just, you make it right to the edge of the thought. You're like, it's right here. I just can't see it for some reason. I love that pothead part of your brain. You ever roll a joint, put it down, go to the washroom, come back, and it's not there anymore? And you're like, oh, I know for sure I fucked this up somewhere. <laughs> Can you even have a subconscious feeling like I put it somewhere so that it wouldn't get wet and now it's gone forever? <laughs> have you ever lost a joint completely and never found it ever again? Hey, I hope when you die you get those back. <laughs> you show up in heaven and God's like, yo, you probably want to smoke. No, you're like, well, here's 10 that you lost over your life. Oh! Okay. <laughs> so, we got to recap that quick joke about my mom that I was talking about. Basement. Smoke weed. Come home from the basement. <laughs> She's chilling out. My sister tells her what the fuck is going on. She's not chilling anymore. So I want you to know, for months I had come home high out of my mind, and my mom didn't know. And on this day she had found out, and it was one of my favorite interactions with my mom. My mom's an old little Portuguese lady. 
when I opened the door, it's so great. I just remember opening the door and going, hi. And she comes out of nowhere and just goes, hi, now say hi to me because you high enough for everybody. <laughs> hey, man, I'm telling you, even as an adult, I'm, in my head, I'm still like, yo, that's a pretty good one. That's pretty good. You have to understand, man, that lady was stewing in that shit for hours. And she, you know, like, when he come home, I'm going to give it to him. You know? And she did. As soon as I got home, it was so fucking funny. Even to this day, I laugh about that shit. Because as soon as I, she, like, she said it to me, and I got shocked. And she walked right up to me. And she goes, let me see your eyes. And I opened my eyes like this. And she goes, close them. You look like a crackhead. And I was like, I do look like a crackhead right now. I got to know. And she like goes, let me see your eyes. Let me see your eyes. And she's staring into mine. She goes, your eyes are red. Your eyes are red like the devil. Never come home like this because I don't like it. And God, God do not like it. And I was so fucking high that I just went, what are you talking about, man? God likes it. And she went, what? And I remember being like, fuck, now I got to go all in with this shit. And then she just goes, what are you talking about? The drugs ruin your brain. And I go, no, listen, man. I do, drugs are ruining my brain. God likes weed. And she goes, what are you talking about? I go, man, God made plants. And she goes, yeah. I go, weed is a plant. She goes, yeah. I go, that means God made weed. And she goes, yeah, of course. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're tricking me. And I go, I'm not tricking you, man. Religion tricked you. And she went, what? And I went, nothing. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Man. <laughs> I'm in too deep now. <laughs> man, I remember having crazy art that for months on end, man. It was wild, man. It was wild. And none of us will have to experience that with our kids. When our kids come home high, we should challenge them and be like, oh, you want to, like, just get angry at them, but, like, in modern, like, ways. Like, you ever hear of people, like, catching their kids smoking, so they made them smoke the whole pack? Do shit like that. Oh, you're smoking weed with your friends? Well, I'm going to give you two dabs. You're going to like it after that? I don't fucking think so. What's a dab? Sit the fuck down. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a dab and I'm gonna order a pizza at the same time. If you can uh, stay awake long enough, you can have some pizza and you'll be high. What's that? <laughs> Imagine giving your kid a dab and not warning them that they're gonna get all kinds of fucked up. Not even warning them about that cough. Because the first cough, like, your first dab is a trick. Because the inhale is so nice, isn't it? You ever remember the first time you inhale a dab? You're like, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> That first dab to your lungs is like a fucking Mike Tyson. Do you guys remember when you first learned how to cough? At first, when you first start smoking weed, you don't know how to cough. You learn how to cough through smoking weed for so fucking long. Like when you first start smoking weed, your coughs are so bad. Like there's like three levels of this shit. Remember when you, when you first start learning how to smoke weed, you cough, but it's small coughs. It's like <clears throat> you don't even have to step away from the set. You're, <clears throat> you're good. But then there's the second one where you got to pass the joint right away. <clears throat> You ever step away and you puke just a little bit? You know what I mean from the coughing? It's not even real puke, it's coughing puke. Where you're like, and then phlegm just goes, and it just makes like a, and nobody hears it, so you're like, yo, I'm next in line, what the fuck? But then there's the third level, man. There's the level of coughing that hurts your eyes, it hurts your ears, your temple and your fucking head feels like it's gonna come. And it always happens from a bong hit mostly, man. You know the bong hit cough? It's the one that hits you before you even can exhale, you know? You ever have people who don't even get their lips away from the bong in time? Everyone's been there, you've all seen it. That's the third level of cough where they're like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> Man, the fucking bowl goes flying, there's wet weed all over the house, and it's funny to everybody except whose house it is. That person knows always like, my fucking carpet, they're like, fucking carpet. <laughs> oh my god, that shit was so funny, man. When you were a teenager, that shit used to happen all the time. Do you guys remember your first hotbox? Your first hotbox is the same thing. It's fun for everybody except whoever's house it is. Whoever's house it is can't stop putting towels under the door, can't stop turning on the fans, praying for breeze and shit. <laughs> so I'll take a little break. Our fucking weed lungs can't be breathing and laughing like that. This is such a fucking trippy show. Every once in a while I look around like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know there's somebody in their office right now looking in the window like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> hey Rick, get over here. They're doing something on that weed patio now. <laughs> you know, they. you don't think these people know it's a weed patio? They fucking know. <laughs> hey look, they're smoking weed there again. That's all they ever do on that fucking thing. <laughs> This is four or five people just smoke weed at all times. We smoke enough weed 
that it's much more than the average. And I like what you ever have like an average weed smoker just like inserted into your group for a little bit, and they smoke that first joint and they're like, yeah, all right. And then like 20 minutes later, the second one comes around, they're like, again? As soon as you hear the words again, you're like, whoa. <laughs> so it's like the second one, it's like eight o'clock, you're in big trouble, man. That's why I like weed more than I like alcohol, because you can't, you can't do too much weed and it become a problem. You understand, like you ever seen someone after like 10 beers? Let's do a comparison. You ever seen someone after 10 beers or 10 shots? Who would you rather be around at a party? The guy who did 10 beers or 10 shots, or the guy who did 10 joints? Obviously you already know the answer. <laughs> guy who had 10 beers and 10 shots wants to fight you, fuck your girlfriend and shit like that. Guy on 10 joints hasn't been seen in hours for fuck's sake. Where is that guy? I think he's sleeping downstairs. <laughs> Leave him, <laughs> he'll come back. <laughs> Hey, there's an Uber Eats here. It's just a guy in the basement. It's mine. Huh? <laughs> I love that kind of shit. I love weed for that kind of like... Uh, that love for the culture, I guess, is the way to put it. Like, when you grow up... When we were growing up, we had weed movies that made weed look amazing. Like, How High, Half Baked. God, there's so many. You can choose whichever ones you want. Cheech and Chong, man. I want you to know, I got to work with Tommy Chong. And, and, and when you work with Tommy Chong, you get, you get to talk to him, obviously. When you walk up to him and he says hello, you realize that when someone does a stoner voice, they're doing Tommy Chong. He doesn't, he isn't, he doesn't do Tommy Chong. When you meet him, like, hey, Tommy's like, hey, man. You're like, oh, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> hey, man, I'm a big fan. Hey, thanks, man. You're like, oh, my God. He's doing it right now. <laughs> and obviously on the outside, you got to keep it professional because you're working together. So you're like, wow, Tommy, cool, man. It's such a pleasure to work with you. Hey, man, it's not, I haven't worked with you yet, so I don't know if it's a pleasure or not, but we'll see. <laughs> you're like, oh. <laughs> and I swear to God, it's a true story. Tommy Chong met my wife, and when he met her, she, she's a pretty good looking lady. And she came around, and I was like, hey, Tommy, this is my wife. He's like, man, you must be funny. She's good, man. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tommy's flirting with my wife. <laughs> right on. <laughs> That's a true story. Oh my God, man. Guys, man, we just, such a unique opportunity to live in such a cool part of history. Just to smoke weed legally. We don't, I like that we don't like it, but we shouldn't like it because it wasn't, it wasn't given the way it should have been given. We had these amazing guidelines. We had this amazing system in place. And the government's like, nah, we'll just do it our way. And now they're learning the hard way that potheads don't give a fuck about <laughs> politics. And we don't give a fuck about legislation unless it's legislation that's fair for everybody. Like, that's the thing. They thought they were going to make this legislation and all of us are going to be like, finally, a solution. <laughs> but all of us are smart enough to be like, no, wait, that's a trick. We know scams. I've been selling weed for 14 years. I know what a scam looks like. And this is for sure underweight. <laughs> you know what I mean? government's like look at our half quarter you're like that's a 20 sack on the street you know get away from me you creep <laughs> have you ever seen like that like the bruce lintons of the world like the tweed guys talk about weed they're such evil villains <laughs> cannabis in the black market it's full of fentanyl <laughs> <laughs> you like smoking street weed you're gonna be addicted to fentanyl <laughs> all of us are high out of our minds on fentanyl like what <laughs> Can you imagine picking up weed and it was laced with fentanyl? And it was at a good price, that's a good deal. <laughs> drugs are drugs, baby. That was such a funny thing when we were younger. Laced weed, watch out, you get laced weed. I'm gonna tell you what 99% of laced weed is, it's just a bad trip on weed. Someone just getting paranoid out of their mind. And I'm gonna tell you something. There's gonna be a weird connection to people having like mental breakdowns and weed, because I've seen it. And I know it sounds crazy, but like all of us can handle our weed like motherfuckers, but some people just can't. Some people just smoke a joint and it's not like, like for us, we smoke a joint like, hey. Some people smoke a joint and you, you can just see it go away in their eyes. They're just like, whoa, oh. <laughs> You okay? Hey, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> And then when you leave the party, they're like, dude, man, what the fuck was happening in there? And you're like, why? Everything was chill. They're like, yeah, dude, I don't know. I don't know, man, I was pretty scared. <laughs> I've, had, I've seen people have full breakdowns where they lose character. They're not even themselves anymore. I've had a friend of mine one time, Botang. I swear to God, this guy's for real. A guy named Kevin Botang. We spoke to join with him. And he started crying, and then he started praying, and we're like, why are you crying, Kev? He's like, I'm too high, man. My mom's gonna know, man. And I remember being like, yo, is this weed lace? This is it, this is sick, here it is. <laughs> wow. like, I mean, honestly, wouldn't it be sick if once a year, one joint was laced, and they don't tell you with what, and you're just smoking, and you're like, 
Ah, oh, this is the one! Fuck! <laughs> 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 That'd be fucking sick. Oh man, I think I got the acid one. Oh, I did. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> We're lucky, man. I'm gonna spark a joint before we get out of here. I don't got that much time, but I'm having so much fun that I don't want to get out of here. The sun's going down. I'm like, I'll perform into the sunset and shit. All of the potheads are like, bro, we gotta walk in the next 10 minutes or our feet are gonna fall asleep. <laughs> Nine? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the full ten. I don't go. <laughs> Give it up for Mike Rita. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, all of us know about the benefits of CBD, and all of us have been preaching it for a long time. But I didn't even learn about it until, I swear to God, this was for like 10 years ago, man. I, I was 18, 19 years old, and I was uh, just learning about the world of activism and weed. And a bunch of activists in Toronto, guys named like Chris Goodwin and shit like that, they taught me about CBD and all of its benefits. <coughs> man, I'm never going to forget this shit. <coughs> I tried to bring CBD into my house when I was 18. My mother had breast cancer, and when, <laughs> when she was going through chemotherapy, like, I, I, I just, everybody had said, people going through chemo, man, give them CBD, give them CBD. So I ordered CBD from Vancouver, from a person who was making it out here, and I tried to bring it into my mom. And you have immigrant parents, you have Portuguese parents. Imagine trying to bring home weed pills to your mom, okay? Look at this guy's face, like, nah, I don't think so, bro. I might as well pick up a coke addiction, bro. Book. I'm telling you, I brought home CBD pills to my mom, and I, my mom was going through cancer at the time, so she was already, like, mentally just all over the place with stress. I remember bringing home CBD and trying to convince my mom and going like, Ma, these are weed pills, and her just being like, what, what is this? And me being like, weed, weed pills, this is the medicine, it's called CBD. And her being like, this is marijuana. You wanna bring home marijuana for me? What are you, what are you crazy? And I remember like, no, this is nice, you're gonna like this. And she goes, I don't want this in the house, I want you to take the drugs out of the house. And I remember like, man, try this, you're going through chemotherapy. This is, this is modern medicine, mommy, this is the new shit, it doesn't hurt you, and it's gonna benefit you. And she's just being like, no, I don't want it, I want you to take this out of the house. Man, and I want you guys to know, like, two months almost fully went by without her ever talking to me about the CBD, without anything ever happening, and then two months, almost, she's at the end of her treatment, I get a phone call, and I'm a writer during the day, so I'm working downtown, and I'm at the CBC building, and I get a fucking call, <laughs> and my mom is on the phone, and I knew it was like two in the afternoon, so some shit was going down, because either somebody died or some fucked up shit, and I pick up, and I go, hi, mommy, and she goes, hello, you okay? And I go, I'm okay, are you okay? And she goes, yeah, because of you. <laughs> and I go, what? And she goes, Mikey, listen, I have to talk to you. And I go, what? She goes, I try it. I go, tried what? It's been like two months. I'm not even thinking about these weed pills. And she goes, the, I try it. I try the things. I go, what things? And she goes, the marijuana pill you give me, I like it. <laughs> and I go, you tried the weed pill. And she goes, yeah, I try it. I try it. I go, man, I, I told you to try it only during emergencies. And she goes, I'm dying. Every day is an emergency. <laughs> And I remember laughing on the phone and having these weird tears of happiness. And I swear to God, I'm on the phone. So I, got, I need you guys to know, like, I have like a little office. And I get down and I'm talking to my mom. I'm like, mom, okay, I'm in the office. Tell me, tell me what happened. And she goes, I try. I try Monday. I like it. I go, why did you try it on Monday? She goes, I try because I feel dizzy. And you said when the bill, when the pill is good for dizzy people. I was like, yeah, it's good for dizzy. Did you feel better? She's like, I feel much better. I feel confident. I feel nice. I go, good. And I go, so why are you calling me only on Thursday? She goes, because today I, I eat two more. And I I go, so you eat three? She goes, no, I eat seven. <laughs> and I go, what? She goes, I eat one Monday, two Tuesday, two Wednesday, and I eat two today, I need more. I only have three or four left. <laughs> and I go, no, man, you can't eat that much. You go, they're, 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 they're for like emergencies. And again, she's so funny. She goes, emergency, I'm dying. <laughs> and I start laughing on the phone. I go, you're not dying, chill out. Okay, so you need more pills. And she goes, yeah. I go, I don't have weed pills. They take like a week to get here. I have to order from Vancouver. And she goes, Vancouver, that's too far. I need to, like tomorrow. And I go, no, I can't get them. I have to order them. And she goes, that's crazy. You don't have something for me? And I go, no, I don't have weed pills. And she goes, you don't have nothing? And I go, what, like weed weed? And she goes, yeah, for me. And I go, you want to smoke? And she goes, no, I don't want to smoke. I'm not a crackhead like you. <laughs> And I honestly remember laughing on the phone and being like, I'm not a fucking crackhead. She's like, ah, you smoke drugs that I don't know. <laughs> and I started laughing on the phone and I go, so what do you want? And she goes, I don't know. And I go, what do you want, like cookies? You want weed cookies? And I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know that I was on speaker because she goes, yeah, okay. 
bring me cookie. And I go, you want a cookie? And she goes, yeah. And then my dad just goes, hey man, tell him to bring two cookies. <laughs> Is that daddy? Yeah, talk to you after, bye. Man, I remember my mom that day just calling me back later that night and being like, you have to bring one for your dad. I don't know. You want to try? I don't know. <laughs> I want you guys to know, till this day, my dad still likes weed cookies. My mom's been cancer free for like three, four years, man. And, uh, man, it's been wild. It's been wild. She went through a bunch of shit in my 20s where she lost it. She got it back. And we kept fighting it as a family. And I want you to know, man, it's wild, man. It's wild because, well, my mom hates weed when she's not sick on cancer. When she's sick, when she's healthy, she's like, I don't want, I don't need it. I don't want marijuana. <laughs> and my dad is still like, I'm not sick, but I give me one cookie. I don't know. <laughs> my dad asks for weed cookies like he's asking for real drugs, too. I want you guys to know, you know, like weed cookies cost like pretty good money. Like they're not expensive, but like a good delicious cookie is about three for like 15, 20 bucks. And that's what I'm paying in Toronto for good cookies that I like. But I can't tell my dad that they're three for 20 bucks because I have to sell it to him. And I tell them that they're three for 10 and I take the $10 hit every fucking time. Because if I told him they were three for $20, he'd be like, three for $20? What are you crazy? This is drugs. I'm paying for drugs now. But if I tell him three for 10, he's like, three for 10. That's okay. I can pay that. No problem. You can never tell your parents the real price. You always just kick it down a little bit. Because when I give my dad these cookies, he, does, he, he, he takes it like real drugs. Like, he'll, like I'll meet him in Wasega, which is like a cottage like area in, in Ontario. <laughs> and, and I'll meet him there. And if he finds out that I'm, I'm free that weekend and I'm coming up, he'll call me on the cell phone and he'll whisper the whole thing like it's still drugs. Like, I swear to God, he'll call me and be like, hey, mommy say you coming up to the cottage. Yeah? I'll be like, yeah, why? He'll be like, hey, you know why? Bring me the cookies. And I want, I'd always be like, how many you want? And he goes, how many you have? <laughs> and I always go, I always lie. I'm always like, I have as many as you need. And he's like, okay. And I always think he's going to throw me a crazy number. He's like, bring me a lot. Maybe two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that's how he thinks. And, and I'm always like, you want a lot, eh? Two, three? He's like, yeah, yeah. I need it for maybe like one week, okay? Bring for me. I, I want it. How much? I'm always like, $10. He's like, okay, good, good, good. I give to you when you get here. And I never accept a 10. I never even want it. I just want, when I get to the cottage, like, you know, I'll drop off my bags, see my mom, give her a hug, and she'll dip. And as soon as she leaves, she'll come out of, like, just fucking nowhere and be like, touch my shoulder. Hey, what are you doing? You here, huh? You have the cookies or what? Huh? Where did you come from? I'm here. I'm over here. I'm over here. <laughs> okay. I never tell this story, but this is the most perfect audience to tell this fucking story to. One time I gave my dad the wrong cookies. I do 150 milligram cookies like most of us probably do in the 100 somewhere. My dad does 25, 30 milligram cookies. One time I gave my dad my cookies, not on purpose, obviously, you don't do that shit on purpose. I, I just went to my fridge and I got a stack of cookies and I didn't, without even reading it, because it's the chocolate ones, I just gave it to him, I was like, hey, here's your cookies. <laughs> and then, like, you know, like an hour or two goes by and I go to my fridge and I see, you know, 25 milligram cookies. I'm like, oh shit, oh fuck. <laughs> and I kind of just, you know, I'm scrambling and I'm just thinking, oh man, maybe he didn't do them yet. And I call him and he doesn't pick up the first time. And I call him two or three times and he doesn't pick up. And I write to him, Daddy, pick up. Are you okay? And as soon as I call back, he picks up and he doesn't even say hello. He just goes, hey, Mikey, how you know I'm not okay? <laughs> and I'm on the phone. I want you to know, man. Think about it, man. Imagine your dad says that to you. You're instantly like, oh my God, I fucked him up. I remember being on the phone and feeling like hot. I was nervous. I was like, oh my God, this guy's all fucked up right now. Hey, I, I swear to God, I started pacing. I'm like, hey, 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 okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. And I go, Dad, you eat the cookie? He goes, yeah, I eat the cookie like always. I eat one cookie, but I'm not okay today. <laughs> I go, what are you doing right now? He goes, I'm in the basement. I go, in the basement, okay, okay. Why are you in the basement? He goes, because your mom upstairs, I don't want her to see me. I go, so what are you doing? He goes, every time she opens the door, I pretend to sleep. <laughs> And I swear to God, in my heart, I was like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Okay. And I go, what are you feeling? And I swear to God, my 67-year-old dad goes, I'm very nervous. And I go, about what? He goes, everything. The TV's too loud. It's not loud enough. The show is good. The show's no good. I'm hungry. I'm no hungry. I'm like, yes, you're going through the symptoms of being too high right now, man. And I go, okay, just what do you want to do? He goes, I want to relax. I go, okay. And my dad, I swear to God, man, one of the sweetest things he's ever said to me, he goes, hey, I'm going to be okay. And I go, yeah, why? He goes, I don't know. I never high like this. I'm high like you. And I go, no, you're higher. He goes, oh, oh. 
I can honestly, I swear to God, I feel like crying just talking about this fucking stupid joke, man. But it's so fucking funny. Uh oh. He, he was so high. I need you guys to know, my father is old school conservative. You understand? My father is old school military, like conservative. The day that, like, when he breaks character like this, it makes my heart explode. I want you guys to know, like, when your parents break character, you know what it's like. You know how amazing it can be. And one of my favorite moments in life was last year, or two years ago now, when my father retired. Um, we threw him a retirement party. And when we threw him a retirement party, he asked us, like, you know, for little gifts. And I asked him, what do you want? And he goes, oh, I want a cell phone. And I go, why do you want a cell phone? And he goes, because everybody have one, and I don't know how to use. I want to learn. I go, that's nice. And then he goes... <laughs> Remember the time you show me? I like it. You know what my dad was talking about? He's talking about a time that I showed him that you could watch porn on a phone. <laughs> I swear to God, I showed my 65-year-old dad that you could watch porn on a phone and it blew his fucking mind, man. <laughs> we were at my parents' cabin up north and we were watching baseball on a cell phone and my dad doesn't understand how it works. And he, wa he sees us watching baseball and he's just like making barbecue and he goes, Hey, what are you doing? And we go, Daddy, we're watching baseball. And he goes, You can do that? And we go, Yeah, I man, you can watch live TV right now. And he goes, That's crazy. And my cousin just goes, yeah, you can watch anything you want. <laughs> he goes, anything? And my cousin goes, yeah, anything. And he goes, anything? And my cousin goes, yeah, you can watch people have sex, man. It's crazy. He goes, no. <laughs> and we go, yeah. And I swear to God, it was the first time I ever seen him break character. And if you don't know what I mean by break character, like usually your mother is your mother. But you ever been in a mall and your mom just nudges you and goes, you see that lady Bernadette? She's a fucking bitch. You're like, oh, oh holy shit, mom. I didn't know we were friends like that. What the fuck? <laughs> one of those things my dad I swear to God I never thought he would have done this shit we go daddy you can watch people have sex right now I swear to God he goes ah, sex come on <laughs> come on man come on show me let me see come on <laughs> and he starts walking up to us and we go what do you want to see he goes I don't know we go daddy you could choose whatever he goes oh, I, I don't know let me see sexy lady and we go yeah of course you want to see a sexy lady or what kind black Chinese white he goes oh I don't know I want the big booby we start laughing okay big booby sure sure and then he goes, what about the guy what do you want to see in the guy black white Chinese and I swear to God he's so immigrant he goes I don't know I don't know we go choose he goes oh, okay let me see the black guy and we start laughing in his face and he starts going hey why are you guys laughing why are you guys laughing this is gay and we go no this is not gay it's got nothing to do with gay he goes what are you laughing then we go man why did you choose the black guy and i swear to god he leans in and he goes because everybody always talk 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 but i never see <laughs> And in my heart, I was like, oh, you don't want to see a black guy. You want to see the black dude. Oh. Dude, we showed him the funniest, longest dick in porn. We showed him a guy named Mandingo, and it blew his fucking mind, man. Okay, because we all know who he is. Like, super famous porn star, like, ginormous dick. And as soon as we showed it to my dad, you need to know he's an old school immigrant. He didn't even believe it. We showed it to him, and he went, no, 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 this is not real. And we go, daddy, that's real, and it's not even hard yet. And I swear to God, he goes, holy shit. This guy have the best job. And we go, yeah, he does have the best job. And I need you to know, my dad is an old school union guy. And as soon as he's seen, and he goes, this guy have the best job. And he looks at us, he goes, hey, you think he have benefits or no? <laughs> yeah, look at the dick. That's the fucking benefit, man. I want you to know, my dad is cool with it. He's laughing with us. He thinks it's hilarious. He's watching this guy's giant dick. He thinks it's hilarious. The minute the blowjob is over, the lady hops on, and we've all watched the hardcore porn. You know what's coming next. She's gonna act like it's too big, like she can't enjoy it. And my dad doesn't understand that it's all an act. It's all, you know, it's a show, man. And he, he's watching it, and the lady's going, oh, oh. And my dad's going, hey, 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 she's yelling. She don't like it. She don't like it. It's too big. It hurt her. She don't like it. She don't like it. I don't want to see this. And I swear to God, he slaps the phone down and goes, I don't want to see this. Tell me the truth. She gonna be okay. <laughs> and I swear to God, I was like, I don't know. I never made it to the end. Who the fuck makes it to the end? You make it halfway, you're like, I'm done. The end. One of my favorite moments in life is that moment, okay? When I thought, when I, that happened, I was like, this is gonna be the greatest fucking joke in the world. I want you to know, it wasn't even done there. Like two months later, we're sitting at my brother's house. <laughs> My, bro my brother has like a little couch area in front of his TV that kind of wraps in this, the kitchen behind us, okay? So I need you to know, my dad's watching TV all by himself, and this Tim Hortons commercial comes on, and the lady in the Tim Hortons commercial looks just like the lady from the porno. And in front of everybody, my dad goes, Mikey, look! She's okay! She's okay! <laughs> God, man, you guys have been unbelievable, man. I've been Mike Rita. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Mike Rita! That's fucking funny. You see why I flew him in from Toronto, right? 
Martin, that's awesome. Uh, Rita the Human on Instagram, that's how you find him. Also, again, thank you to Crop King Seeds for making that happen. So, uh, CropKingSeeds.com, and uh, all of you for coming out here today. I appreciate that. I got some notes. I got some housekeeping stuff to kind of wrap things up here to fill you all in on. I appreciate it. Some thank yous, some appreciative uh, 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 kind words, I guess, when it gets down to it. Like, a lot of you supported what I do through this season, and if it wasn't for a lot of you, I wouldn't have been able to do what I do. So thank you to you. Appreciate that. Also, everybody who watches from all around, wherever you watch from, there'd be no point doing this if nobody saw it. So thank you very much as well, too. Also got to make sure that uh, you go ahead and support all the Bud broadcasters who do what they do, including all the folks from Pot TV. I see Jerry and Carly in the place to be as well, too. What's going on? I know a lot of folks like Freddie Pritchard, the Weed King, the Swammy who saw it coming. What's going on? Free the Weed, Freddie. Uh, we've got folks like Dog of the Hut, Pedro and Dizzy, all the folks on there, D420K, Johnny B, yeah. Koala Puffs and Trippy T Trees, both who were part of the show this season. So make sure you support all the can of content creators because that's what we do. So thank you very much for all that. Uh, also, while I'm thanking people, uh, Rob and Cindy, could you stand up for a second, please? These two in the front here. Round of applause for Rob and Cindy. Can you stand up for a second, please? So, uh, Cindy is our hostess, a.k.a. the guest whisperer, for those who don't know. She's done a fantastic job welcoming all our guests, making sure everybody is also in position on time. Uh, she's also going to make sure everybody's happening and feeling good, so thank you for all you do, Cindy. Rob is also the guy in the chat room for who uh, is in there giving all sorts of information and education, keeping people up to what's going on there, monitoring all that. You've been doing it all season. That's a lot of work. So, so Rob, look over there and say hi and say thank you as well, too. So thank you very much to both of you. Uh, speaking of people to thank, Puffa, the big Puffa. Yeah. Stand up, my friend. What's going on? Turn around. Let him see the jersey. Yeah. I knew he did it on purpose. Well, also to that effect, so we are. I do have the Shaw subscription here. We got the airplay. We got all the TV gonna go in the green room. We got another one we can wheel in the hall. I know the game starts at six, and some of you gonna try and watch that. We're gonna try and stream that up next. So, uh, I like you. But I hope you lose right now. Uh, uh, that would be great. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, holding it down for dab time as well, too. Uh, being a dope music director and a good bud. Uh, you've got a lot of, uh, you've always had your ear in the streets and exposed me to some people and some things I wouldn't have had and been, you know, just helpful. And I, I love your hustle and uh, appreciate you being around. So thank you very much. The Big Puffa. Lord Beasy on Instagram as well, too. Speaking of hosts for just a second as well, two co-hosts, DJ Slippy, just stand up and say hi to you from Fridays. Make sure you tune in to Fridays at 2 on Fridays at SaveOnRadio.com. Me and DJ Slippy over here holding it down tomorrow. We've got um, DJ Doberman and Rat, a cat named Ratchy. So make sure you tune in to SaveOnRadio.com behind the scenes over there. You know, you got to get the housekeeping in as well, too. Also, I was also wanted to uh, call out Stormy. Stormy Ent at this point as well, too, here. You remember Dreadlock Girl Season 1? We all know her. She got stuck in, uh, in Coquitlam, and with the Instagram being down, couldn't get the communication down, but Instagram's back up. Yeah, so unfortunately, she can't be here, but she is watching. So, Stormy, thank you very much for everything you did, Norm, helping get Season 1 off the ground. You're the best. Appreciate you. You're awesome. Also, Jenny, stand up for season two. The girl in yellow as well, too. The Canagar queen. Uh, Loud Onio. Came in she sent me a Canagar to say, hey, I want you to smoke this and try this. And I thought it was kind of ballsy. And I was like, okay, well, sure. Let's see what you got. And they were good. And next thing you know, she was on season two, holding it down with me. So thank you very much for everything you did. Um, keep killing them worldwide, by the way, as well, too. Follow Smiling Buddha until Instagram shuts that down, and then they'll come up with a new one. You know, you'll find it. They're, they're out there. Canagars are awesome. And yes, we're going to smoke that in a minute. Uh, also, huge thank you goes to Andrew and Cannabis Life Network for everything that they do. Connected partway through season two while I was doing everything by myself still at Pot TV. Uh, which I got to thank Pot TV as well too for holding it down while I'm talking networks as well. Uh, you you helped me grow and my brand and uh, the show to make it just so much better. Um, also, I talked my joint out, you know, and like that's just a sin. I can't. I'll take a pause to relight that. Because let's face it. Uh, let me see what else. Sorry, a little few things to say here. I don't. I, anyway, been a massive part of the success, and it really wouldn't have been here, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your help. So thank you very much, to everybody involved with that. Appreciate you being here. And, uh, yeah, um, also, <laughs> you guys put up a lot of my shit, 
and you wouldn't believe how much Andrew jumps around in the back there, so it's a lot of work. So again, all the cast and crew who always does everything we do, the people who do the montages, everything, everybody who's coming on board. Just, there's so much more to come, it's gonna be so dope. Um, and the best is yet to come. Hey, what's up, brother? I see you sneaking in the last minute. What's going on? People are just literally sliding in. Um, anyway, why the trip down memory lane? I gotta say this, some of you may know, some of you don't, you might have figured it out. This is not only the season four finale, but this is the series finale of Expert Joints Live. Yeah. Um, this is the last episode. At least for a while, anyway. Um, a little more. A little more. After 180 episodes of a show that I started just because I didn't have a video this week, it was literally what it was. I didn't have a video. I just started to do the show for the sake of I needed some content. And it's been a four-year full-time job that I put like 40 hours a week into is completely taken over. And I've got so much more stuff creatively that I want to do. And like, I've literally done over 250 episodes by the time with pot TV shows, co-hosts, other specials, the Friday show, everything we do. Talk to more than a thousand guests and I could keep doing it, but I kind of want to do some more stuff too. And to be able to do the content that I want to do and have the time to focus on that, I need to stop doing this for a while. And it's not to say that I'm not gonna do some live specials and stuff, or I might not even bring the talk show format again at some point back, but I'm basically doing the job about four people at once. And it's like, great, I enjoy it, but it's all I get to really do. So it's just time for something new. So I appreciate you guys who all came through here to do that, to celebrate this in a nice way to break it down. So thank you guys for everything. <laughs> So there'll be a new show coming somewhere in the fall. Uh, something a little different. It'll be cool though still. Also a bunch of new content to continue to come out as well too. Lots of events, lots of coverage, actually more stuff. It's actually the way it's gonna work out here as well too. So that's gonna be really fun. So I'm really excited about that. So make sure that you follow on Expert Joints everywhere. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up while we're doing the homework for those people watching on YouTube. And if any of you still got those joints left, y'all wanna light those back up? So at the end of the show, of every episode, I've said three words. Some of you know them, and some of you don't. So it'll be the last time for at least a little while. Would you join me, please? Andrew, if you're ready, hit the music! On three, okay, one. Oh, oh, we got it, okay, on three. On, I need you to repeat after me, on three. One, oh, shit, ha, ah, ah, that's why. Sorry. On three, one, two, three. Andrew. Thanks, y'all. Now.